Hello, my name is Molly Johnson, and I um, came to Ward Valley in 1995 to volunteer for three months and ended up staying here for about four years. I was the uh, manager of the office, the Save Ward Valley office in Needles, California, and I also acted as a liaison between the tribes, the five Colorado River Indian tribes, and the other organizations that were part of the Save Ward Valley Coalition, which was a very wide range of people, everything from Earth First to Greenpeace and everything else in between. When I came here, the first thing that we did, we did a, a spiritual gathering over across the valley on the airstrip. And in doing that, I got to uh, work with a lot of the tribes and the elders. And so that started a relationship that continues to this day. I believe that the Save Ward Valley fight was one of the most important environmental victories that we have ever had in this country for several reasons. Uh, one of the main ones being that such a very coalition of people, native, non-native, uh, Americans, Europeans, all kinds of people came together, worked together, set aside their differences, and were able to defeat the United States government, the state of California, and the nuclear industry in trying to place a radioactive waste dump in this beautiful valley, which is home to the desert tortoise and is in fact one of the few places, in fact one of only two places where the desert tortoise is not afflicted with the upper respiratory tract disease which is decimating populations everywhere. Not only that, this is a sacred place, this is part of the spiritual path that the Mojave uh, people's soul takes when they leave this earth and they travel to the other side. So I come back here every, every year, and I've come back every year for 15 years, and I will probably come back here every year until I just can't anymore. If I'm not here, I'm dead. Um, I love coming back because, like today, there's just as much enthusiasm, there's just as much honor, uh, there's just, there's so much positive going on. It has given these tribes um, power. This fight gave them the power uh, to oppose this kind of thing, and they're doing it all up and down the river, and they're continuing to do it. They're teaching the young people, and the young people are learning their traditional ways and learning how to fight for themselves, and that to me is the greatest thing. And I continue to be an activist today. I'm part of Mothers for Peace. We, we work against Diablo Canyon, try to keep it safe. We, we do all kinds of things. You know, every day it's fight, 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 and, and a person can get extremely discouraged. Um, there's days when you just want to say, oh, why bother? But whenever I feel like that, all I have to do is think to myself, there is no radioactive waste dump in Ward Valley, and there never will be. And it gives me the strength to continue on to the next day. Thank you. Bradley Angel and I'm the Director of Green Action for Health and Environmental Justice and sitting here on a beautiful day in Ward Valley, a uh, place of one of the great victories won by regular people who came together from all walks of life. Uh, you know, there was supposed to be or planned to be a nuclear waste dump right where I'm sitting and, and talking to you and because people from the tribes along the Colorado River and people all races and colors who came together, this place has been saved. And it was a pretty incredible fight. You know, the company U.S. Ecology had a track record of leaking radioactive waste dumps, but the U.S. government didn't seem to care. 
The state of California didn't seem to care. They supported building a nuclear waste dump here. They didn't care that we're sitting above an aquifer with numerous pathways to the Colorado River that provides drinking and agricultural water for tens of millions of people. They didn't care that this was land that was very sacred to the tribes that have lived here since time immemorial. But the people cared, and it was an epic fight that was fought out with protests and the courts and the public hearings and culminated in a 113-day peaceful occupation of this beautiful land that was done with great dignity and, uh, p again, people from all walks of life coming together. Today, there's still many threats to this area, to the desert, this beautiful desert that's under attack in many ways. You know, the desert's not what it used to be. There's, you know, a lot of the species like the desert tortoises, folks know, are endangered. Uh, the river is contaminated, thank goodness, not with radioactive waste from here, but from upriver, there's a lot of threats. There's mega industrial projects like, you know, we support solar, we support wind but it has to be done in the right way and in the right place. And unfortunately, again, uh, some companies with the blessings of uh, state and federal governments want to pave the desert. They want to pave it and destroy the desert and wipe out what's left of it in order for some companies to make a buck and then transport the energy. We want to see solar on rooftops, not paving the desert. We want to see solar and wind in appropriately picked places close to where it's being used. And we can't just say, oh, we don't want to see this solar, we don't want to see this wind, because what does that leave you? It leaves you coal-fired power plants that are destroying the planet and causing asthma and many other health problems and turning our air brown and orange. It leaves you with nuclear power that's destructive from how you mine it in uranium mines, how you mill it, and how you use it in nuclear power. And, and one of the issues that we talked about today to alert people and that we're working on is that a company called Blue Castle Holdings wants to build a nuclear power plant, two reactors, and have high level uh, storage for thousands of years of the high level nuclear fuel rods up in Green River, Utah. And a lot of people might say, well, that's hundreds of miles away. Just one thing that Green River, Utah is right by the beautiful Green River. It's a majestic river like the Colorado. This nuclear power plant will be located three or four miles from the Green River, and the Green River flows directly into the Colorado River. It's a major tributary, and it's also near uh, some of our most amazing national parks, Arches National Park, uh, Canyonlands National Park. But even from a health and environmental perspective, if, and I would say when, there would be a problem at a Green River nuclear plant, that contamination would come right near here, flowing right down the Colorado River. Again, and not just like the low-level radioactive waste that was proposed for Ward Valley, we're talking the high-level, super radioactive waste associated with nuclear power. So there's a lot of threats that we as American people and people all over this world have to deal with if we want for our children and our grandchildren to have a place that's healthy and people able to live in. We think that what happened at Ward Valley is a really wonderful lesson because this nuclear waste dump that was proposed for this stretch of desert, it was almost a done deal. The state of California wanted to see it. The U.S. government tried to ram it through. They even brought their police here to try to let the company come in drill holes in this ground to test for what they thought would be the nuclear dump. And people, just ordinary people, did this extraordinary thing, which is overcome cultural differences and personal differences and different perspectives and speak with one voice to say that this place had to be saved. And it worked. It worked. And that's something, you know, you heard, you can fight City Hall. Well, I always knew that was true. Well, you can fight City Hall but you can also fight, if you have to, our own government on a national level. And people can still win if you have the facts, if you have the truth on your side, and are willing to do what it takes to win and have a better life for everybody, then it's worthwhile and it can actually work. And I think that's really one of the beautiful things about being here today in the Ward Valley.